Hello, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us in this info session. Uh, while I'm talking, I would suggest you to write your name and the place from where you are joining us in the chat box. So please, if you can do that. Um, I will start to share my screen to briefly explain about what we do, what a money and the social innovation man management program is. So just a second. Can you see my screen? Perfect, thank you. Um, oops, sorry. So this is the last from a series of four info sessions that you had since the beginning of January about the social innovation management program. And today you meet me. My name is Flavia. I'm one of the program managers from the SING program. And I'm also a fellow. I did the program in Kenya in 2017. You also meet Gigi, who is our global community director and is joining us from Germany. Um, you will meet Anya and Dilo. They are fellows from our first 100% digital edition. They are about to graduate next week. So yay, big congrats on that for you. And also adding to this amazing team, you will meet Christina and Confrey that might be joining us in our years they have already graduated. And today we'll be talking about their money community and the network. But before I do that, I'd like to first give you a little background of what the social innovation management program is. So over the, the past years, we had 542 fellows from 64 different countries. We had 304 apprenticeship places. Of those 542 fellows, 385 were human, or have a vast majority of human, and 157 were men, one transgender, and 156 cisgender. Uh, we had 150 employer partners, Employer partners are organizations that values our CN program and sees our fellows as an asset to the organizations. And out of our 542 fellows, 90% agreed that the CIN program helped them to develop a career as a change maker. You see the country we are based in. We are in Brazil, in Kenya, and in India. And our fellows have come the vast majority from Latin America and Africa. We have quite a few people from Europe and Asia, and we are working to have each time more and more people from the North America and the Middle East too. We have never had nobody from Oceania. So when you choose to join a money institute, you become part of a community that's committed to social change. So the community aspect is very important to us. We will be always meeting, helping each other, working together. We are always in touch in our emotional and our workplace level. And that's what we will be talking in, in a while. About the program, we run the postgraduate certificate in social innovation management program, which short, we call it the SING program. Uh, it runs in English, it's 100% in English. And particular, the, the digital edition is for like, all the editions are for people from all over the world, but the digital edition broke one barrier. Now we are available to receive people who, for different reasons, maybe because they can't leave their family or can't leave their place of work to live three months in a different country. Now they can do the 100% digital edition 
and join us even if they can't leave their, their own country. Uh, we are kicking off our next digital edition on March 1st, and it will run until July 30th. The application deadline is February 25, 50, the 15th, and we have scholarship applications until the January 31st. And the second part of the year, we will be running a blend edition and that's pandemic permitting, of course, with a three month aspect online and then three months in person in Kenya. Uh, about our approach, how we do that. So how do we make people become change makers is to give them the experience by doing so. We offer our fellows the opportunities to work in the social sector, to work in the field. Part of the SIM program is to develop a social innovation project on your own. That's something that you are passionate about and you are burning for something that you want to change. So you need to work on a challenge on your journey as a change maker. And another aspect of it is that all the materials and all the knowledge that you pick up in class, you can apply at your own job, your own enterprise, or at your apprenticeship experience. Uh, the second part is that you will learn from experts. We have a team of faculty. We have guest speakers from all over the world. It's very fantastic and engaging people. It's one of the most attractive, attractive assets from Amani Institute. And finally, the third aspect is about learning about yourself and it's to reflect about who you are, who you are as a leader, how do you function in this world, what's important to you, and how can you make the change happen? That's what we have been talking our last info sessions. If you had the opportunity to join us, you can check on that. And you also have this recorded. Uh, so the digital edition is a five months program with two webinars per week from two to three hours with additional smaller sessions, the smaller group settings where you'll be able to apply a lot of the knowledge that you pick up in class. Uh, you can find all this info in our website. We can put it in our chat box in here. And it's also in the end of this presentation. Uh, the final calendar will be shared closer to the beginning of the program as we are still working on it because it depends on who people will be joining us and depending on the time zones and the timelines. So we must align of that, align all of that before sharing it with you. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, um, the scholarship deadline is January 31st, the final application deadline is February 15th, the program starts on March 1st, and it ends on July 30th. And now, talking from the subject of our session, uh, as I mentioned, one of the aspects that is very important to us is the community and the network. I usually joke saying that Amani is a matrix with no exit door. I can give my own example, my peers, my classmates, the girls from the same cohort as I. I keep meeting them, like now that I'm one of the program managers, they are the apprenticeship host. They work at the organizations that receive the fellows that I give classes. Uh, we apply for public offers together. We try projects together. So we keep meeting a very, nice way because it starts from the same point with the same Amani internal jokes and we have this work relationship but a lot of a friend relationship too so it's very nice to be part of this this community and that's the subject of our session today so I think, I think Flavia it's important to mention that you are an alumni I don't think everyone knows <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mentioned during my presentation, I said that I'm also a fellow that I did the oh, program yeah. in Kenya in 2017. So even like 
when you are doing those presentations and then you go to those final pictures and you see someone from your cohort say like, oh, he was in my class. <laughs> and you're just setting the deck of slides to, you, <laughs> to your class. So it's, it's a community that's very beautiful and it's very nice to be part of. And today you'll be joined by Gigi, who will be telling us what she does and how is it to, make, to build this sense of community. And we also have Anya and Dilo, who are fresh graduate fellows from our 100% online digital edition. And Confrey and Christina, I hope Confrey had the time to join us. I will stop. Thank you so much and welcome everyone. I see Lucy also has joined. Welcome Lucy and hi Confrey, nice to have you here. Um, so let me introduce myself real quick. I'm Geraldine Hepp, but people call me Gigi. I'm part of the founding team at Amani Institute. So I've been with the Institute from the very beginning when we started out in Kenya um, without an office. <laughs> we, start, we actually got our first office on the day when we started the first STEM program. So we, we were really like lean startup business style. Um, yeah, and I've, I've been, I've been um, wearing many different hats over the years in the Institute. I've been teaching um, one part of the program, developing the curriculum of the inner journey of the change maker, but I've also been um, running customized trainings for cultural organizations in innovation and sustainability management. And all those years, I've also been um, always part of building this community because I had a natural affinity to social media. And so I was managing our communications in the beginning and, and the events. And um, yeah, and with time, our community grew of the social innovation management fellows. In the beginning, it was very family style because when you're a small institute, you really, you know, you, you, everyone knows everyone. Um, of course, as an institute, it's our um, impact bottom line that our fellows actually go out there and create social change in the world. So it's really not just in our interest from a reputation point of view, but actually it's part of the reason why we exist is that we care so much that these people that come to our program actually then um, find their way as change makers um, professionally um, through their lives. And with time, of course, we grew in numbers. We crossed the threshold of a, of a family tribe size of 300 people, 150 to 300, and now we're over 500 people. So with time, we had to become more um, deliberate how we organize ourselves as a community and understand how we you know, create the kind of lifelong learning and the support that we want to offer to each other. And so I can say in a nutshell, this community uh, at Amani Institute of Social Innovation Management Fellows is a community of professionals from very different backgrounds. As you've seen earlier, we have uh, people from all over the world, but we don't only have people from all over the world. We have people from all different kinds of backgrounds, different educational backgrounds, different socioeconomic backgrounds. We have um, people with very different professions. We have people beyond boundaries um, aligned with our vision. Uh, from, from the private sector, from the government sector, from the social sector. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to ask yourself, what can this, this kind of community of these, all these different professionals actually do for each other? And the first thing is, as innovators, it's absolutely critical that we keep pushing ourselves. It's like building a muscle. It's like that workout that we sometimes skip, but we should keep doing it to keep fit, is we have to keep building a muscle of looking at things from different perspectives and building our global mindset because our problems appear local, but then they're all globally connected. So all these fellows and different parts of their um, journeys, you know, will be able to actually access this community of very diverse perspectives. They're diverse in terms of sector, like what, what, what background they have, but also where they come from and so on. So that's really cool. So it's a co community of support, inspiration. I know that when Amani fellows meet, they, they usually walk away inspired. <laughs> and it's really funny because sometimes fellows meet in a conference and then they talk and talk and then they're like have you heard of Amani Institute yeah I, I went there and then they realize they've both been through the program it has happened a couple of times actually so that's really funny um, but it's also nice because it shows a lot of shared values and, and um, a shared approach really to, to trying and, and see the world and do something about the things that you know you want to change 
And um, so there's inspiration and then it's a community of lifelong learning and of impact. So people, as Flavia was pointing out, she's collaborating with her classmates or other people from the community. So people also do work together and create collaborations. And I think mm. you'll hear a few stories about that um, um, in, in a bit from the alumni. Um, so there's lifelong learning, people keep learning from each other, but also of course um, continue um, in their own education journeys um, with Amani Institute and sometimes in other places, um, learn from each other. And um, yeah, so that's that. And I think to your question, Flavia, and how, how, to, how to build a community like this, I think uh, a key is of course that the starting point of a community is really important. And in this case, we're lucky because it's a very strong starting point. The social innovation management program is, as many people say, very life-changing. And there's a shared experience that um, bonds people, even, even in the digital version. Um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll let you speak for yourselves, but we were surprised that it actually even works in that, in that edition. Um, so that's there. That, that's that. And then afterwards, when you want to make sure that you know people continue um, actually um, building, you know, strong relationships and 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 support and inspire each other, there's of course work to be done. Um, you know, people go through different member journeys. You know, sometimes you were really busy and you don't have time. Already a part of your like com local community, right? But you can always come back to Armani. So people come, go, whenever it's like, you know, more relevant for their in their lives, they can also come back and give back to, to new fellows, which is super nice to see the alumni return to help new fellows in their, in their process. And they tell them trust the process <laughs> because they've been through the same thing. And, um, and I think one of the things how to build a strong community is really to um, have a place where they can return to people and keep, um, you know, we say repetition and, and rhythm. It's important that people hear from, from each other and from the Institute in, 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 in rhythmic intervals. There needs to be um, rituals, celebrations. So it's not just transactional, right? It's not just like, do you know a job, la la la, but it's like actually to be transformative. It, you need to have moments where inspiration can really live. And I think this happens in small ways when people really talk to each other, but also we have summits where people gather to each other and sometimes this physical coming together really create a new sort of wave of, of you know, um, support. Mm. Uh, so I think rituals are important. Um, I have a few more tricks and they all start with an R. <laughs> I figured out, but I'll write a book about it and then let you know more about it. But if you have, of course, if you have questions about how to run a community, I don't think this is a class about this. I think it's more about the value of the community uh -huh. money. But I think a general message to anyone who's listening right now is that, you know, being part of a network is nice and it's good, but a network is worth nothing if you don't have actual relationships within that network. Right, because people people like to help people that they know, right? Or you make an extraordinary good ask, and you know, like somebody's like, "Whoa, this was a really nice ask." I'm definitely happy to help mm. this unknown person. But it really helps to know people, and the stronger the bonds are in your network, the better for you, because then you can leverage, you know, all those um, networks that these other people are part of for your work, um, for the impact that you want to create, or for your professional journey. So that's why I think the community aspect is so important because within the larger Amani network, fellows, of course, don't know, all know each other, but they have their very strong relationships where then somebody else can recommend you or give a tip or, you know, say, I know, actually my classmate has been working on the same thing and you should talk to them because they have lots of resources for that and so on. So that's why I think for any professional community in a network is really important. And also because it's really like a long road to create the change we want to see in this world. And it can get lonely and frustrating sometimes. Sometimes people around us don't understand our choices and so on. So to have a community that understands your, your, your journey is really, really helpful. So this is enough from my end. <laughs> if you have more questions, you can ask me. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much, Galactic DG. Looking forward to read your book. <laughs> I think, yes, as you said today, the point's not how to build a community, but, the, but about the value in the community. And 
Cohen, Frey, and Christina, I'd like to open the voice for you now. And if you can briefly introduce yourselves and who you are, what do you do, and what brought you to Amani? And if you can answer, what's the value perceived to the Amani community? No, what makes you keep connect even after a few years that have already graduated? That would be awesome to hear your perspective. So I think this can bring us a better sense of what Gigi is explaining to us. Yeah, and just to add, actually, Christina and Confrey both are community leaders. We just started this year a new governance model, and Christina is a community curator for North America, and Confrey is community representative for Africa. So thank you so much, you two, that you're here. Thank you, guys, and uh, very happy to be here. Uh, I've just put on my video now. I'm in traffic. Uh, uh, but I'm happy to join and listen in here. So, um, Flavia, you can go ahead. I, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So for me, um, uh, the community, uh, the Amani community, means so much. Uh, when I joined as a fellow, I think that's uh, one of the the values that, that I recognized was uh, the global mindset, and uh, in Amani, that's what I found a community that. Um, in the way we do things, uh, people are thinking, uh, solving uh, uh, yeah, global challenges. Uh, I work for WWF, the, the, the uh, Worldwide Fund for Nature, uh, the innovation um, lead. And uh, one way I've benefited from the Amani Institute is uh, some of the projects that I implement, I need an innovation partner. And uh, who, where else to run to? So I ran to Amani and I will ask them, okay, mm -hmm. I was launching a new innovation program and I ran to them, oh, I need to do a work plan or I need to start these uh, design challenges or uh, hackathons, etc. How do I do this? And there, Aman is also even currently uh, helping me implement one of my uh, key projects called the Greenhouse Session. So I really appreciate the Amani community and to be a fellow here. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Confrey. Awesome. Yeah, and I think at the, at the Greenhouse Sessions, there were like a bunch of fellows that were also speakers at that um, event series, no, Confrey? Yes. Yeah, it's a net. We keep meeting each other everywhere. We are in the air. <laughs> How about you, Christina? If you could share a little bit from your experience and what keeps you coming back to a money community? Yes, of course. Um, I think for me, it's the people in the program, especially my cohort. Um, I did the program in 2017 in Brazil and did it in person, so the blended version. And I think a lot of, during my time there, a lot of people, um, I was able to connect with a lot of fellows. And I think the major part is that Amani does a really good job with um, choosing the right people or, sim or people who share the similar values. So in that way, I found it super easy to connect with my cohort fellows and being able to stay in touch after the program ends. And I think I've been part of different community, different networks since college and even prior to college. But I think usually I thought um, community would die down or communication would die down after program ends or after we leave the in-person experience. But I think this is a special one. And that's also why I keep coming back is because people always stay in touch and they genuinely um, are interested in you as a person and what you're doing. So a lot of time in, for example, in the WhatsApp group for my cohort, we still stay in touch and people update each other on what they're currently doing and offer any help or advice when needed. And also people reach out for help. So I think a lot of time we still keep in touch and it's amazing to see how even just by, um, like right a month after the program ends or even now, like a few years after program ends, how much people has changed, but also how much people has stayed true to their self and still continue with their personal and professional development. So I think that's the values, the people are something that's super um, special for the Amani community. And that's also why I really like the community and would love to give back as much as possible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you, Christina. Yes, I agree with you. Like, it's not like that. 
I'm talking to my peers from my cohorts every time, every month. But all the time you talk, we talk, it's so special. We feel so much good energy in this change that it's so nice to know that there is a place where you can come back and make a request and give something. So thanks for sharing. I, I like what you said. And one challenge that you had last year with our 100% digital edition, it was like, wow, now people are not going to meet each other on person. This will be so different for us because you are hugger people. We like to talk, to happy hours, to chill out together. So how would it be to have a 100% online edition? And it was even a prototype for us from the Amani team, you know, how will it work? And now I would like to open the, the word for you, Anya and Dilo, who have lived this experience and have gone through this entire experience with a cohort of 32 people. After all, you no, know, what were the values perceived even not getting the chance to meet people in person. How was that for you? I could, I could go, thank you, Flavia. Uh, my name is Dilok Shem. I work for Oxfam International, a humanitarian organization based in Sri Lanka. And I have a humanitarian background of nearly 14 years of working with the, in the same sector. So, uh, when, when it comes to digital version of uh, social innovation management, it, uh, it totally transformed. Uh, we did not feel even one instance that we were not able to meet in person because we had so much of innovation within the program. You know, like we organized uh, gathering parties and things like that in a different time zone. So, uh, we, we used to say we lived in the past, we also lived in the future because uh, there were 35 people from 18 different countries. So when we schedule it, it, it falls from two sets of time zones, you know, either one need to sacrifice staying after, uh, uh, staying through midnight or someone has to start from the early morning. So. It's, it's kind of an enjoyable experience. What makes the community unique was people came up with different set of skills. You know, there were uh, strong entrepreneurs and also uh, startup funders and humanitarian sector expert, business expert. But when it comes to the community, everyone had the same DNA for social innovation. That makes us to feel like one family. Because, you know, if you take one family, most of the family members will have the same DNA. So there might be diverse set of audience. You can always go back to talk about social innovation. So for us, it is learning within the learning itself. You know, like we learn from the experts of Amani coaching team, but also we learn from individual uh, members when we connected to, because there were lots of tools and uh, lots of uh, where they work in their different contexts. In some other contexts, it's, it's most of the time it was new. So for me personally, I actually, see this as a learning within the learning opportunity when it comes to online session. And uh, most of the time, uh, we could go back to have a discussion with different types of uh, objectives with different sets of people. Because when the course goes along after three months, four months, we came to better understand the specific skills, specific skill sets of individuals. So we could have a segment of people say, if I want to have a discussion about uh, business related, I know this group of guys that I, I could go 
schedule discussions and and share learning and things like that and when it comes to uh, uh, innovation of product for saving lives there is a sets of people we could always go for and have discussion and learn from each other so for us the community that we been networked with gives us abundance of knowledge and opportunities to learn from every individual awesome thank you dilo thanks for sharing your perspective we also get surprised that you were able to make this even 100% online <laughs> And it was a good surprise. Anya, I'd like to hear from you. How was to be in this 100% online course? And how did you feel? I still feel in the sense of community. Before we go to Anya, I want to also announce that also Anya is a community leader. <laughs> because she was exactly, it's true. part of the leadership team for the community in Europe. So super cool to have, to have a... Yeah. a just a graduate to join the leadership team. Thank you, Anja. Thanks, uh, Chichi and Flavia. Um, well, I'm Anja. I'm uh, living in Zurich, Switzerland. And I used to work in like project and event management um, in the music and event sector. And last year, with Corona, a lot of things uh, turned around and changed. And I just generally wanted to explore the social sector and like social impact work areas in quite a broad sense. I didn't really know what to expect from Amani, but I was always interested in having somehow a positive impact in my, with my work. And yeah, I wanted to explore what possibilities are out there to actually do that. Um, so I started the online program and I think I agree with a lot of things that uh, Christina Confrey and Dilo already said and for, especially for the online class I think it was very uh, true to it's what you make out of it I think that's true for every community um, but even more so in an online community because I imagine if you're in class in Nairobi, the class is finished, you can just step outside and have a beer or coffee or whatever together. But online, of course, when the call is over, the call is over, you're still back at home alone in your room, basically. <laughs> but you kind of have to make an effort, uh, like Dilo said, to reach out to other people. You know, this person, in a professional and kind of more personal uh, way. You know, um, Dilo is the expert for innovation. <laughs> so you reach out to Dilo and, but you also maybe heard something in a class that someone, I don't know, mentioned a book. So you just reach out to this person. And um, I had a lot of calls um, like outside of the class uh, we had gatherings, big gatherings with everybody, smaller gatherings. Um, we all worked on our social innovation projects and there you could like, see the different interests and burnings. And so you see oh, the other person is also interested in, in my example, it was sustainable to, uh, sustainability in tourism. So you reach out to that person and it's kind of you can choose how active you want to be and how deep you want to go or take it you can you can kind of decide it for yourself and i uh, decided to try to go deep and yeah build a lot of connections and it's crazy because i have i would have never expected that an online uh, class can be so deep and so I know so pers on a, such a personal level and we all say that we still have our group chat uh, as well and like a lot of people are now taking different other courses together in teams and we are all super stoked to one day meet in real life that's definitely uh, gonna happen somehow somewhere 
And I think Amani also did a great job. Um, like now in our classes, some um, Amani alumni came to the class and shared their projects or shared some insights that they have or whatever. And so you got a feeling for it. And it was amazing because you could just reach out to other people, for example, Confrey um, saw that I was looking for help for my project. So he told me um, he's free to chat. So he took his time for like an hour to just uh, talk to me about my project. And even though we have never met uh, in real life or just before that, it's there's like instant connections, even in the online world, you know, for, for me, it's still, um, sometimes it still uh, blows my mind because it's what Christina said before, it's people share the same values. Amani does, I think, a great job with choosing the people and it's the same values, but also the same kind of overall interests and questions, um, why the world is how it is and how you can change uh, certain things so it's this yeah it's this instant connection even in an online world and i'm already excited for all the real life meetups <laughs> that <laughs> happen. yeah i get emotional just to think about it <laughs> me too <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's a different environment no it, it's like you're saying no it's months there is no coffee table washroom lines it demands efforts in a different way but at the end we arrive at the same asset no we are if we are open to, to talk to change in a in a two-way road it's nice we can make those the value of the community emerge. And I think one other aspect that you mentioned that I like is that something that you give as much as you can and, and you take back as much as you give. There is no obligation. No, it's not that we as a money, as program manager will be like, oh, you need to interact at the group. There are people that are in a more these moments of their lives, they don't have that much time to direct so much. And it's okay, there is no problem. It's a safe place that you can come back whenever you can. And if you can now, it's okay, you'll be there. People are not going to be obligating you to be part of this community. So people can interact at different levels. And it's nice to see that those interactions happen and it ha they happen at different levels. Uh, I don't know if you want to compliment with something now, Gigi, but I would also like to open to the plenary. I don't know if Lucy or Jean have some questions to make. We still have 15 more minutes to go. So I'd like to give some space for you to make questions too. Sure. Um, I, I think I would just be curious to hear maybe from Christina and Confrey a tip or so they may have for you know people um, that want to, you know, go on this professional journey as change makers and in terms of networking. But I think maybe this will come out also through the questions. So I think we can also go to the questions. But Christina and Confrey, just in case you have a tip, you know, <laughs> you can chime in perhaps. So, so Lucy and Gian, do you have questions? I sure do, yeah. Um, the first thing, just quickly about the, the whole um, network, uh, network aspect that you mentioned, especially Anya, um, how does it work across cohorts? So in, within cohorts, I can imagine it's very, um, very easy also to communicate across. Um, but how does it work between different cohorts? Do you have some platform that you can reach out to or some way that you can reach uh, different alumni? Perfect, good question. Yes. I don't know if Chichi wants to answer this because she's very passionate about the platform. <laughs> um, no, we have a platform called uh, Workplace. It's kind of like an internal Facebook. Um, so you can find everybody, all the um, alumni on there. Um, you can look for um, certain words that 
or topics that you're interested in and hopefully people filled out their profiles <laughs> and it will pop up um, and there you can send private messages and post events that are happening and um, yeah it's quite busy there's always something going on so when we were looking for something I was looking for someone to help me with my project I just posted in there um, describing the project and what kind of feedback I'm looking for and there's more active people and less active but there are quite a, a few active people and then that's I think one value because Flavia was talking about values it's like the generosity that with that people are helping it, I think on the every post someone gives an answer and um, tries to give feedback um, and yeah there you can look for everybody and text basically everybody from the whole Amani community. Yeah, thanks Anja. Yeah, and we have about, I think it's 540 fellows now and it's, I think every week there will be around 200 that are on that platform. And daily about 90 to 100. So it's, it's a pretty high um, volume um, and very high percentage. Um, typically in, a, in any given community, you will have like 10% engagement and in Amani mm -hmm. it's much higher. But yeah, it's, 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 it's user friendly because it functions like Facebook, but it belongs to us. It's, it's, a, it's a product from Facebook though, um, but the data belongs to us. So there's a, the privacy concerns that we ha had on the Facebook groups, you know, we're kind of taken care of with that. And, um, you know, people post interesting articles or videos. And, you know, when you're looking for a theme, you can just go like, put sustainability in the search bar and then also that all the posts, all the questions, all the articles and so on with that will come up. So it's, it's pretty awesome. And I think also like Confrey was mentioning, you know, that he worked for WWF and he keeps going, he keep going to the alumni community from looking for people from all the cohorts, not from his cohorts to see how those people can help him in his project innovate then. I, like even at a money team, we are in, in the global team, I think we're in around 20 people and like six to seven fellows from different cohorts from different countries. So we keep engaging a lot with other <laughs> cohorts. And then I think those transformational moments that I spoke about earlier, like summits or gatherings is where people also meet them across. Um, mm -hmm. But I think people from cohorts are sort of like guardian angels or Charlie's angels for each other. So when they, you know, they see something and then they tag because they know, they know their people better than anyone else. So then they can tag someone and be like, hey, by the way, I know you do this, you know, so it functions like a, you know, organic like thing, but it, it works pretty well. Yeah. Sounds very interesting. Thank you. Very, very. Uh, well functioning also and with this very high engagement also i think that's great for alumni yeah yeah uh, maybe another question it's about the, the oh, oh yeah sorry christina go oh, go for it, go for it. no no you can what did you oh i was just gonna add a comment to Gigi's comment on the organic part and i think um a, a good value i saw is that amani is structured in a way but also agile in a way that it's um, always pivoting and trying to make the best out of the the fellows and the alumni so I think it's also flexible in a way that you can make the experience your own absolutely but there's definitely a structure there but I think the balance between the structure and flexibility really makes it something special yeah, yeah. Cool. Go ahead, Jen, you were about to say something. I had another question about the, the sort of the local organization. I think um, Comfrey, Christina and Anya, um, how does, what happens within, within Europe, within uh, uh, North America, within Africa, what happens there? Is this, this the conferences that happen solely within there or how, how are you organized um, on a continental level maybe? Yeah, so we are just going to start the communities, uh, but we are very much engaged. We meet, we have uh, uh, 
connected on uh, workplace and also WhatsApp groups uh, where we share either details, information, or someone is looking for a job and they are moving, transitioning. Then we also organize uh, meetups, uh, like in case you are going to have a, uh, a drink somewhere and you will invite a couple of guys, or if you are in the same class, we celebrate celebrate birthdays together all those uh, kind of stuff yeah to just keep us going yeah and i was mentioning the community leaders so anya christina and Confrey uh, um have just been selected to be community leaders and um we, we're just starting this structure now um but basically what is happening is that we found that on a regional level there was a need for um closer exchange beyond the global um, home that we have with that platform that Amya mentioned. So there we have WhatsApp groups and there's, you know, depending on the region, there's pretty much, um, um, uh, you know, daily exchanges happening and some less and some more. And um, in, in these regions, we realized it would be good to, to coordinate a little bit more specifically um, according to what the region, the fellows in those regions want and need. And so this is why we now have a governance model where there are circles, we call them circles, regional circles, and they have leaders from the community. So you're, you're here with three of them. <laughs> and, um, but we're just starting to prototype it. So we will see by the end of the year how well mm -hmm. it works. Um, but it's, it's exciting because it opens up new possibilities for us um, as, as a community around the globe. Yeah, but one example would be the WhatsApp from Brazilians here in Brazil. We have a WhatsApp group just with all the Brazilians from all over the course, from the three countries that we just talk in Portuguese. And it's the busiest from... part of. <laughs> Sorry? I, really say. I said it's the busiest WhatsApp group I've ever been part of. <laughs> yeah, it's very active. It goes Hello. from like, I yeah. need someone to adopt a dog to job opportunities. <laughs> yeah. It's very cool. There's, there's a lot of chat. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also, we have a lot of Brazilian um, fellows. Yeah. Yeah, I think it might have like 150 people in the group, no? Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And I think one of the, this is actually also another thing that I really like about this community. Um, being myself from the, from Germany, from the so called West, is that you know, there's a lot of talk about social innovation everywhere. And, you know, it's always a question about how do you really do it, you know, and this is this is a program that doesn't only teach you how to actually walk the talk, but it's also connecting you with a community of really diverse perspectives. And I said that in the beginning, but I think it's worth it to reiterate it, because it is so important that we learn to see other perspectives. And oftentimes, you will end up in a program um, uh, that that, you know, content wise may be great, but it doesn't give you this access to different perspectives. And you can't really practice that if you don't have these, you know, trusting relationships. It's, somebody mentioned a safe space earlier, but this community we are aspiring to at least um, to be a safe and a brave space both, right? Where we can really also, you know, try out things and get honest feedback <laughs> and, and from, from an other perspective. So yeah, it's really cool. Thank you, Gigi. We have a few more minutes to go. Christina and Confrey, if you want to add in the tip that Gigi had mentioned before, like for who wants to make a career as a change maker, would you have any advice in terms of network? That would be nice to hear from you. I think for me, one of the things I learned from one of the sessions with the instructor was uh, making, I think it was on being lucky and how to make the most out of it. And I think we practice that a lot of time. We think lucky is by luck, but um, during the exercise, we learned that it's about actually reaching out to people and asking what you need and telling people what's telling the story that you have behind what your motives are. So a lot of time that leads to um, offers or some extra guidance or help within the network that you wouldn't have unless you actually reach out to people and share people about the story that you have. So I think that plays a lot after my, um, during my career after Amani, a lot of time it's um, actively reaching out and actively networking with people with the genuine interest of understanding who they are and what they're doing so that 
in return, I can also provide that offer or guidance or help when there's needed. Yeah. That's a good tip. That's really, I like genuine interest. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was also about the peripheries, right? Like the people close to us kind of oftentimes already know, but if we talk to the people at the periphery, there's a different opportunities opening up. And that's why in this community, you have like 500 people. Most of them are at the periphery, <laughs> but they're all accessible. So it's really cool. <laughs> How about you, Confrey? Would you have any tip in terms of network for who wants to, make, to be a change maker? Maybe lost him. No, me, yeah. Yeah, ah, so, uh, yeah. yeah, for me, I think, uh, you know, the saying iron sharp is iron. So if you want to be a change maker, I think the best tribe to be in is the Amani community because they, they have shaped me a lot for the work I do today. And I learned fundraising, uh, how to build a social venture and all those skills uh, in the Amani Institute. So. The network is so broad and uh, uh, you get so many experts, people uh, from private sector, uh, people who are starting up, people from uh, like who are, who are like, um, uh, like uh, the, the facilitators, the instructors, all these people have created change. So you learn from each other. Mm. Uh, Perfect, thanks. And pay attention to the track. We want you alive. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, guys. It was very nice to be here and sharing with you. I hope you could get a sense of the value that the Amani community and the network has, why it's so important for us. And please feel free to get in touch in case of doubt. You have our website, you can write for us. I can let my mail, I guess Gigi can give her mail. Here too, just a second. If you are thinking about making the problem, feel free to reach any of us. If you wanted to be in touch with some of the guest speaker from the alumni and the fellows who you have met here, we can make this bridge. Thank you so much, Christina, Confrey, Anya, and Dilo to dedicate a little bit of her time to be here, to be back with us to be here sharing your experiences. I'm looking forward to your graduation, Anya and Dilo. Thanks so much, Gigi, for the company. You're so welcome. And everyone watching, you're so welcome to stay in touch. And we are happy to help if you have any doubts. There's many programs out there and there are many, many great ones. So, you know, um, this is one of them. And if you are interested in this one, then we have to help you.